guys, welcome back. My name is Allie if you're new to my channel and welcome to Beauty With A Purpose. So if you are new, my name is Allie. I upload three videos a week, beauty, Bible, and lifestyle. So if any of those interest you, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's get into today's video. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, so for today's video, I have a Jesus Chats for you guys. And it's gonna be a little bit different today. And it's going to be over my top five current favorite book recommendations for those of you who want to get closer to God. There are some, well, there's only one, one, there's only one in here for a wife this time. And I did that specifically because I know not all of you guys are married and I'm sure some of you are like, okay, I'll recommend a book that's not for wives. So I got that for you. I got a whole good stack of reads here for you. So yeah, I always tell my friends, I got a little library. You can come pick out a book, you know, just a little one and but just return it because i like my books and i like to reread books especially ones that are informational and will teach me how to be a better woman of god so yeah that is what we are going to be going over and these are in no particular order they're just my favorites for different reasons so i have them stacked right here and these are my top five favorite christian books and so for women for women and so uh yeah let's just go ahead and get started and my first one that i'm going to talk about is the five love languages now this is good because i've seen people who aren't followers of god who talk about love languages i really want to read the five love languages of children because your girl could use help learning her children's love languages like i kind of have it down but i would really learn love i would really love to learn how to love my children better if that makes sense so i really want to try that one out but i really love this one especially if you're already in a relationship even if you're not you can go ahead and read this and figure out your own love language but i never i did not read this until i got married to brian and i wish i would have read it sooner because i was trying to love brian the way he wanted to be loved and he was trying to love, I mean, the way I wanted to be loved and he was trying to love me the way he liked to be loved. Even still to this day, Brian's is acts of service and gifts and then it's like quality times. And so Brian will still try to love me with gifts and my number one is, no, my, girl, y'all, I'm lying to y'all. Mine is acts of service and quality time. Brian's is words of affirmation and acts of, uh, and gifts there we go but brian will still try to give me gifts and i'm like that's not how i feel love like yeah gifts are nice i appreciate them i love them but i kind of don't feel loved because you're not listening to me about what i want from you does that make sense on how to be loved so i think that this is important to not only know your part not to not only know your own love language so that way when you do get into a relationship you can tell this person like look this is the way that you can show me like like this is when i feel most love this is the way that you can express to me that you love me because that's very important because you don't want to just have like blindside this person to be like i never feel loved and but you don't even know how to tell them that you like how you feel loved or maybe you don't even know what you like to feel loved so <laughs> that's why i really recommend this one and then again to learn how to love your spouse learn their love language how you can tell them that you love them without just being like oh i love you but to be able to show that you love them by doing whatever their love language is so for instance mine like i said is pretty cut and dry quality time spend time with me acts of service if you see I'm lacking behind on my chores, like go sweep the floor. Like I feel loved whenever Brian be sweeping them floors. And I'd be like, ooh, he fine. Look at the way he working that broom. Like, but anyways, <laughs> I'm embarrassed. But anyways, yeah, love that book, especially for uh, couples. And even if you're seeking to be, cause not everybody wants to be married, but if you're not like you're a single woman and you just want to know, you know, maybe how to love those around you. Now, 
This one is a very recent one. Like the book's not recent, but it's pretty recent to me. I have a book review up on this one on my channel actually. And this is Holy Hustle by Crystal Stein. Oh, this one's by Gary Chapman. But this one is Holy Hustle by Kristen, Crystal Stein. And it says embracing a work hard, rest well life. I am someone who doesn't know when to stop. I am someone who doesn't know when to stop adding things to my plate. And I am someone who will try to serve God wholeheartedly while having my heart invested in other things. And so I really like this book because it helps me take a step back and look at my life and say, okay, yes, I can work hard, but I don't need to live a life of striving to only work. I need to find the balance of rest. I need to know whenever my body is telling me that I need to rest. And I need to know that it is okay to say no sometimes whenever someone may ask me for something. So this is definitely what this book has taught me. So if you're somebody who you really do have a hard time of knowing when to stop working and when to start resting, this one will put it in a very biblical perspective of why it's not healthy or spiritually healthy for you to only have a work hard mindset or the opposite end of the spectrum of a laziness mindset. This one really, really helped me find that healthy balance because I was somebody that even if I if I took a nap, I felt lazy because I felt like that was being lazy. But in reality, my body was just tired and telling me, hey, take a break. But there is also an opposite side of that of where all you do is sleep or all you do is sit on the couch and watch TV. So this teaches you the healthy balance of only working and only resting or only being lazy, that's a better word to put it, but to find the healthy balance of work and rest. Okay, so the third book I have is She Laughs. This one was actually a recommendation from Karina. Shout out to you, girl, woo woo. But this one is, I love this book. She laughs, she laughs, choosing faith over fear. This one has really helped me swallow trials and tribulation, trials. It has really helped me take trials and tribulations with a grain of salt. It helps me find the joy in the midst of trials and like it says, fear, like choosing that faith. This has really helped me find faith in a situation over the fear in a situation of the outcome. So it's really helped me put fear to the side and look at a situation full of faith and of a good outcome and hope like that's what this book has showed me and like it's not really like a only scriptures type of book i love that th i love this book because she gives real life her personal real life experiences and applies it to a way she applies it to her life in a way where she had to choose faith over fear but it's like her own personal stories and so i like i like whenever authors can especially in books like this can get personal with you and share with you like hey i wasn't the perfect christian but this is how this is what i learned through this situation and that's why i like this one like she's not saying you'll never fear but let me help you learn how i kind of learned to have faith in bad situations or things where i just could not see the light at the end of the tunnel this is what i like this book for this next book is actually a devotional it has a devotional at the end of the book for each chapter it has chapter questions for each chapter at the end of the book now this book is called trusting god by jerry bridges all books will be linked down below um trusting god by gary bridges and this has i started reading this book when we changed our churches back at the end of 20 of june of 2019 um I started reading this book around August of 2019. And this book has really helped me rely more on God than the people that God places in my life, if that makes any sense. This book has allowed me to trust God in people or God in general, rather than trusting the person because people hurt you. And not only that, but just in life, and excuse me, just in life in general. So I really wanna make, I really want to make it a point to read the back of this book because if you're someone who's new to the faith or maybe you're in the middle of your faith and you're just finding it hard to be like, okay, God, take over, I really recommend this book. Again, it's called Trusting God and it just says, because obeying, or it says, what? why is it easier to obey God than to trust him? Because obeying God makes more sense to us. In most cases, his laws appear reasonable and wise, and even when we don't want to obey them, we usually concede that they are good for us. But the circumstances we find ourselves in often defy explanation. When unexpected situations arise that appear unjust, irrational, or even dreadful, we feel confused and frustrated. Before long, we begin to doubt God's concern for us and his control over our lives. 
We ask, why is God allowing this? Or what have I done wrong? During such a time of adversity, Jerry Bridges began a lengthy Bible study on the topic of God's sovereignty. What he learned changed his life and in trusting God, he shares the fruit of that study. As you explore the scope of God's power over nations, nature, and even details of your life, you'll find yourself trusting him more completely, even when life hurts. So that is, I jumped into this book out of jumping out of a very, very hurtful situation for my faith. And so this was God, like, I feel like this book was a promise from God of, hey, it's still okay to trust me. Do those people represent me? Yes, to a certain extent, but people still have free will. And so this book was my reminder that God is still good even when people aren't and even when it's people who say they follow God. God is still good. You know, God didn't make those people bad. God didn't make those people hurt me. But this book reminded me that God is still God and it, it truly was for the better in my walk with Christ and just in my life in general. So yes, highly, highly recommend this book. Check it out, you guys. You will not regret it. If you regret it, I'm sorry, but check it out. I really don't think you will though. Again, that was trusting God. Okay, and last but not least, this one, and I'm already saying that this one is a favorite even though I barely finished the beginning of this book because, so this book is, okay, so this book is called Praying for Your Husband from Head to Toe, and this is by Sharon James. So this book right here, the first, it's 31 Days of Prayer Over Your Husband. And I like this book because she did it to where you could do these prayers over and over and over again, and it's numbered to match the number of the month that you're on. And so praying for your husband from head to toe, but the first like almost 50 pages are going into detail over why she designed these prayers the way she did. It's jam packed with scripture. Like all that highlighting you see guys is 95% scripture. And even whenever you get into the prayers, like right here, it says, okay, praying over his knees. She gives you a scripture that goes based over the prayer that you'll be praying over that specific body part. Now, you will have to read the book to understand why it's like, oh, his head, his toes, his knees, his arms, his hips, his side. Like it goes deep into his body parts, but in a very spiritual way. So his head, his thoughts, his mind, what he could, what he's focused on, his his back for him to trust on God because God has his back, his arms, so that way he can allow God to be his strength. Like it's so freaking good and intense. And I am going to go, should I have read the back of all of these books? But anyways, I feel like this book is pretty self-explanatory, but yeah, I love how she breaks down and over and almost 50 pages of why it's so important to pray over specific body parts of your husband and why it's specifically so important to pray daily for him from head to toe. And so, yeah, I hope that you, this made sense. Um, I will actually take the description of each book off of Amazon and post it under the book title with the link. And so that way you can see which book you want. I will actually do that since I didn't read the back of every single book. But yeah, I do recommend all of these books, you guys. This, you know, like they're just all very faith building, faith encouraging, trusting in God. Like they will build you, build you up into becoming that godly woman you want to become. Or maybe you don't even know if you want to walk in this life or take say, say yes to God. Well, then that's what you need trusting God for. So if you're watching this video and you're like... I don't really even know much about God. Start here. Start here and then jump into all the other faith building. Um, this is like your faith foundation. Um, so like the foundation of the house and then the rest are to build onto it. So yeah. So yeah, you guys, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you're going to be picking up any of these books, checking out any of them out, if you have read any of them. So yeah, I love you guys, but always remember that Jesus loves you more. If you haven't already, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Mwah.